What is real revival? I'm not talking about a Christian buzzword. I'm not talking about a special meeting. I'm not even talking about a temporary healing anointing where people come to get a miracle. That's great. But real revival, I believe, is a return to the pattern that we see very clearly outlined in Scripture. And our guest today is going to provoke you not to settle for anything less than what the Word of God reveals as your inheritance. Welcome to The Resting Place a place where you will experience the supernatural presence and power of God both in and upon you, where you will meet face to face with the Holy Spirit in a tangible way, and where you will encounter signs, wonders, and miracles. Join Larry Sparks, prophetic teacher, lecturer on revival, and publisher for Destiny Image today, as together we enter into The Resting Place. Welcome to The Resting Place. I'm your host, Larry Sparks, and in this program, it is all about creating a resting place for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. The guests I have on, like my guest Lydia Merrow, are people who are, I call you revival practitioners. Because, listen, wow. I'm a bit of a theorist in the sense that I have studied revival, I have been blessed sure. and touched by it, and I do what I can to help navigate or facilitate meetings like that. But, I mean, Lydia, you have been in the fire of revival. Tell us a little bit about your history in sure. revival. Oh, I would love to. You know, I often tell people, my life was really forged in the fires of revival. You know, I'm a third generation minister on both sides of my family, w just forged in Pentecostal fire. Uh, my grandmother was a holy roller when that was not a figure of speech, you know. <laughs> and um, But over the years, you know, it became a thing where our church became very religious. And when I say that, sometimes people use that word to mean all sorts of things. So let me just clarify. clarify. What I mean is we had no real expectation for God to do anything anything at church. And we thought we knew what to do if he didn't show up. Oh my. We knew how to carry on and have a church service without the Holy Ghost. And what it produced, the main byproduct that religion produced was boredom. Wow. And in the in that vacuum of boredom, people would begin to fall into private sin. I remember in the year the year before we went to Brownsville for the very first time, there was an outbreak of sin in the church like you would not believe. And it was, people were pastored through that. I'm not throwing stones at people. Sure, sure. But in the vacuum of a real connection or encounter with God, people are going to act out in their flesh. It's mm. going to happen every time. And so, Larry, the first time, my, you know, my dad, a friend of his called him and said, you've got to go to the Brownsville Revival. He said, people are shaking under the power of God. They're falling out like flies. you got to go. My dad said, I wouldn't cross the street to see that. Wow. He said, I, I grew up seeing people shake and rattle and roll, and that's not impressive if there's no change in their life. Yeah. And this man said, well, up to this point in the revival, which was only a few months, he said, 5,000 people have given their lives to Jesus Christ. And my dad said, I'll go see that. That I'll see. Yeah. So we got in our Ford Aerostar van, Come all on. four of us, you know, my mom and dad and my little brother and I, and we went 500 miles from Augusta, Georgia to Pensacola, Florida. And I remember walking, first of all, people are lined up to go into a church. Yeah, yeah. Like, who does that? I mean, and the lines were long. I remember seeing Massive. pictures of people out there all day. All day long. In. You couldn't even get in the church if you hadn't stood out in line all day. Wow. And then this, this was March of 1996 for us. It was our first time. And it was actually quite chilly that day. I mean, believe it or not, in Florida. When Northern it Florida. Cold, Pensacola. It, gets it cold. happens. It yep. happens. And it was about 32 degrees, and the wind is blowing, and people are still in line to go to church. So I was already blown away. We walk into the church building. And I kid you not, Larry, I had no idea. I'm now a word study nerd and I get it. But 11 year old Lydia had no earthly idea that the Hebrew word for glory is kabod. That means the weight, the substance of God. I didn't know that. But when you walked in that church, it felt like you were trying to breathe underwater. The, the air was heavy with his presence. I didn't even know what it was, but I was like, oh, my goodness, something's different in here. Yeah. I remember I remember when we sat down, they 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 opened the service, the the, the presence of the Lord was just so overwhelming. And they worshiped for two and a half hours. Oh, yeah. So toward the end of worship, Pastor Kilpatrick comes up, and I thought he was going to say, you know, in our church, if the Lord had broke out like that, two and a half hours of worship, he'd have said something like, isn't the Lord good? We'll see y'all next Sunday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pastor Kilpatrick comes up and says, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a 10, 15 minute break, <laughs> and we're going to come back. They have another 30 minutes of worship, and here comes Steve Hill. And he was he was terrifying, Larry. 
I mean, <laughs> preaching with tears streaming down his yeah. face, but the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I've often left and said, man, I wanted to repent of stuff I never even did. It was so strong in the room. Mm. That night, we watched, I'd never seen it in my life. For the first time in my life, I watched a thousand people run to an altar and get saved. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, something real is happening in here. And I just want to say this, a lot of people watching will think, how could have an 11 year old process that? You know what? There is just no scriptural reference for a junior Holy Ghost. That's right. And there, there was no way you could have told me that God wasn't in that room. I knew he was there. You yeah. could feel it. You could have cut the air with a knife. Mm. So Steve said, we want to pray for all the first time visitors. By now, the service has been going on for four hours easily. And we're tired. My little brother was about eight years old. He's done, you know. And my mom said to my dad, she said, I'll stay back with the kids. You go get prayer. Yeah. And my daddy took three steps down that aisle and he spun on his heel. And he looked at my mom and he said, no, we came as a family. We're getting prayer as a family. Mm. And that sentence absolutely changed my life forever. We walked down and we, we've laughed about this for years because now the altar was full. Oh, Nobody yeah. else in the room had to think about getting prayer. We were the only idiots that had to think <laughs> about it. We were on the yeah. very back and nobody in the room even knew who we were. Yeah, yeah. And Steve was giving the prayer team speech. Don't let anybody pray for, pray for you unless they've got a purple badge. Oh, yeah. And out of nowhere, he turns and points his finger at my dad and he said, sir, the anointing is raining all over you and your family. And my dad goes, okay. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the crazy guy's yelling at us. Like, this is getting serious, you know? <laughs> he turned and tried to finish his speech, but he pointed back at my dad and he said, no, I said the anointing. And he starts running off the platform. He grabs me out of the face. I'm just, I'm 11, almost 12 years old. He said, Lydia, he said, sis, the anointing is all over you and it's what's gonna carry you through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my brother goes into a vision. He looks at my mom and said, what's going on in this church, mama? She said, what do you mean? He said, Jesus is standing right over there and he's smiling and he's waving at us and there's this golden rain falling all over the room. He said, mama, what's going on at this church? And Larry, I tell you from that day in March of 1996 yeah. to right now in 2021, we have never found a way to be normal again. Yeah. It's like Holy Spirit hit us right in the face like a Mack truck standing in the middle of the interstate. We have never been the same again. Pastor Kilpatrick always says, once you put your feet under the table of revival, you'll never be satisfied with anything less. Well, when we go to the next segment, I want it because this was not just a one-time occurrence for you. No. I mean, you ended up leading worship That's right. in a major revival, the Bay of the Holy Spirit revival, That's right. pastored also by Pastor John Kilpatrick. That's right. But I want to encourage those who are watching right now. There's such a presence of God here. I actually believe there's people who are watching and they're listening to Lydia and there's something about you where I see, and this is just something in the spirit, they're listening to you and they're like, I want what she has because I trust her. Because sometimes you get all sorts of spiritual shenanigans. We've sure. seen it. Sure. But what I, and I know you, you're a friend. People are listening to your testimony. They're like, I want what she has. I've seen the phony. I've seen the fake. I've heard people going on about revival, using it as hype language, sure. buzzword, that type of thing. Sure. But what you just painted a picture of is, I believe, just a foretaste of really what God wants to pour out That's right. into the earth. I mean, with maybe a minute left, what do you see coming in the days ahead and then we'll transition? Oh, only a minute for that. This is dangerous. We'll transition. Yeah, is, yeah. The truth <laughs> of the matter is this. God is not interested in producing another fluffy um, set of extended meetings. Yeah. He's not interested in, in all of that kind of circusy stuff that we've tried to make it in Western Christianity. What we are going to see, the Bible declares that in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. That is without exception. I believe we are going to see a very literal return to the book of Acts. Yeah. I believe we're going to see miracles. I believe that the Bible, Jesus said, these signs follow those who believe. I believe we are going to see an outpouring that will mirror what we saw pattern in the book of Acts. I don't think it's for the special people. Yeah. I don't think it's for the hotshot preachers. I think this is going to be all hands on deck, Holy Ghost revival at every level. Yeah. And you know what? The church that Jesus birthed in the fire of Pentecost is the yeah. church I believe Jesus is returning for. Come on. Stay with us. We'll be right on back. Larry Sparks is a prophetic teacher, lecturer on revival, and publisher for Destiny Image. He travels worldwide, equipping everyday believers to encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit in their everyday lives, translating God's supernatural power to the spheres of influence they have been called to. 
Larry is driven by a vision to see the earth filled with God's glory. This will happen only as every person touched by the power of God learns how to become a resting place for the Holy Spirit and releases His power, prophetic strategy, and presence into education, government, media, arts and entertainment, business, family, and the church. As Larry hosts meetings and seminars, the presence of God moves with great power to renew believers, revive the lost, and send forth reformers to change the world. Check out his website for more information. Welcome back to The Resting Place. I'm your host, Larry Sparks, and I'm talking with my guest, Lydia Mero, about what is real revival. And even in that previous segment, as you were talking about it, isn't it amazing that when people even talk about yeah. what happens in real revival, it stirs you. It like, does. I think of Steve Hill, the funniest thing people can do yeah. is actually go on YouTube, which they can do, and find the Father's Day oh, video yeah. Oh, yeah. from when the Brownsville revival started. Because it does not seem like an impressive sermon or no, service at first. would never have thought it, and yet it birthed what history marks as the longest running move of God in American history. Yep, five years. Five years, It's and you'd have never thought it. There was something to recognize in a moment, but you know, Pastor Kilpatrick always says, Larry, that whatever you talk about will come. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and that's what he did. Literally, Steve Hill, I remember watching it, studying it, oh, analyzing yeah. it, Oh yeah. and all Steve was doing, and Randy Clark did the same thing in January 20th, mm. 1994 at Toronto, talking about what God Come had on. done, talking about what their eyes had seen. You wrote this beautiful song that says, Oh, what my eyes have seen. Right. And literally, that is what catalyzed or birthed these two revivals, Brownsville, Toronto, that have right. changed the world. Absolutely. Is ordinary people like Steve, Randy, talking about how God had touched them, which is, which is amazing. So I'm thinking, I discovered you and your ministry years ago during the Bay Revival. So you had the Brownsville Revival five That's years, right. but briefly tell us what happened. They called it the Bay Revival, Bay of the That's Holy right. Spirit. Pastor John Kilpatrick was the pastor of this revival as well. What happened there? Lightning struck twice. Lightning struck twice. We didn't even, I'm not sure that I could say we even dared hope that God would do such a thing. Yeah. Um, but I believe I believe that Brownsville was birthed on the prayers of a church that prayed for two and a half years. Yeah. Brownsville had prayer meetings. They canceled one of their most popular services for preaching. The Sunday, I think it was the, the Sunday, Sunday night, night service. Yeah. That was back when Sunday night service was cool. I remember. Right? Yep. And it was, a, it was, you couldn't cancel the preaching. You just couldn't do yep. it. Yep. But pastor did. And he made it a prayer meeting for two and a half years. And the Lord erupted in that place because of that prayer meeting. If Brownsville occurred because of the prayers of one church, yeah. I believe that the Bay Revival occurred because of the prayers of one man. Yeah. I really do. Wow. Wow. Because the thing that, uh, the thing that people don't understand about pastor, Pastor Kilpatrick is. Everybody likes the Pastor Kilpatrick that preaches on a pulpit. Mm. The pastor that I know is the man that sits on the back porch with the Lord and prays. Yeah. And I believe that he personally missed the Brownsville revival so much that he prayed the Bay one in all by yeah. himself. I really believe that. And I mean, look, I could be wrong, but that's what I believe. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you were dealing with a church of his presence. I was the worship pastor there at the time. And the thing of it was, Larry, we didn't even have our own building. We were meeting in the, in the Daphne civic center. Yes. And that sounds impressive until you realize that its previous use was, it was the Winn Dixie. <laughs> so God broke out in the frozen peas aisle. I mean, that's how Come it on. was, right? You weren't there for the start of the Brownsville revival. I wasn't. But uh, but you were there for the start or the breakout of the Bay Revival. That's right. Was there was there a moment? Was there like? Oh, there was a moment. Tell, I, I want to hear about there that. There was a moment. My God, have mercy. There was a moment, and it was it, for for me. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. It was another one of those services that if you watched that night, I don't know if you would have thought that was a great service. Yeah, yeah. It was a Friday night. This is the end of what we called Open the Heavens Conference. Come on. And it had been a week long of services. Larry, I was the worship leader, and this was my ninth session. Oh, my. So my voice sounded like somebody ran over it with a truck. It was <laughs> terrible, and I'm just kind of choking my way through it. And by the by the time, you know, uh, Evangelist Nathan had been preaching, I don't remember, don't tell him, I I don't remember what he preached. And it was, you know, in South Alabama in July, it was hot outside. So we had the air conditioner absolutely blasting. Okay. And I'm cold. I'm tired. 
and I'm ready to go home yeah. and go to bed. Mm -hmm. My family had been up for the conference from Augusta, so I have a house full of company. I'm just exhausted. Let's go home and go to bed. Not very spiritual. Don't feel spiritual. <laughs> I love and it. Nathan Morris tells everybody in the whole church, there's about, two, about 1,000, 1,200 people in the room. He says, okay, I'm about to pray for everybody that wants prayer, and Lydia's going to lead worship while we do it. And I oh. thought, no, she's not. <laughs> I, looked at the, I looked at an usher standing next to me. I said, listen, I'm going to get him started, but I've got no more voice. So I'm going to do like three songs and then tell the guys in the sound booth to put a CD on. I, where did we get this guy? Yeah. Like, I'm going to put him back on a plane. I'm done. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just being honest. Yep, come on. I'm just we being honest. That's real life, yeah. okay? And I turned back toward my keyboard, and the keyboard in that sanctuary was toward the right of the platform. From the left side of the room, there came a hot wind. And I know that people are going to struggle with this because no. for years in America, people have said that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Yeah, yeah, You're going to have yeah, a yeah. hard time proving that in the Word of God yep, because the Holy Spirit will not abide by rules about propriety that we have made up as we go along. That's not going to happen. So this is going to bother some folk, but this is just the story. This yep. is what happened. Yep. I felt that hot wind come and it punched me right below the rib cage. People witnessed it. I, it. It's on camera. I was picked up and I was thrown to the floor. Nobody laid a hand on me, yeah, yeah. but the fire of God picked me up and body slammed me behind my keyboard. And I'm starting to hear this terrible sound in the room. <laughs> and it sounded like somebody shot a cow. I mean, it was <laughs> horrible. Ooh, it was just terrible. And then I realized, oh my gosh, it's me. <laughs> Wow. I couldn't even control it. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't pray in English. I couldn't get tongues to work. I'm <laughs> like, God, what in the world is this? And he said, it's the last night of Open the Heavens conference. You didn't think I'd let it get to Friday night without doing it, did you? See, that's people need to like people need to be careful about what they actually name their conference. That's because right. Because literally what was named was happening. The heavens were being opened. Paul Just, said this. He said, I didn't come to persuade you with pers with persuasive words of yeah. men's wisdom. But I came with the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And one of these days, Larry, when God starts coming to demonstrate some of these cute catchphrases we've been using, yeah. the church will be tremendously surprised only to realize that God's only doing that which we've asked him to do. I got to prophesy that. Do right it, prophesy. Because I actually believe even with worship songs. Come on. You know this. Come on. There are so many worship songs that have gained mainline reception in main denominations. And when you actually think about the lyrics, they are talking about realities that if those things manifested would really destroy would all of the religious systems we have. But I actually believe the Lord is so faithful that he is ready to respond to the songs right. that people have been praying. And he's like, listen, you may not even have a grid in that particular That's church right. or context for this, but you've cried out. You've he's actually out. made that song your prayer. When it's a God prayer, he will answer that prayer according to what he intended. Yeah. Yeah. not according to our perception. Yeah. And I believe, Larry, that one of the main things we're about to see, in, in, especially in the American church, I believe God is going to deliver us from our language problem. Mm. God is going to deliver us from using language and terminology that we have not yet experienced. Yeah. The way He's going to deliver us is He's going to pour out what we ask for, even though we didn't know what we were talking about. Yeah. And that's what happened to me that night. It would be an hour before I got up off that floor. I had to be hauled out in a wheelchair that night. Come and on. what ended up what ended up happening was it became known as the Bay Revival and people all over the world heard about it, especially because Delia Knox got up out of her wheelchair after 22 and a half yep, years. Yep. The fruit of that revival is still having repercussions all over the world yeah, today. Yeah. But it happened in a moment and it had to be recognized by the pastor. He said, this is exactly like what happened in Father's Day 95 yeah. and said, God, do it again. And God erupted. I personally yeah. believe that what we experienced was God pouring out the fire of His Holy Spirit, even though most of us didn't really fully understand what we were asking yeah. for. Well, in the next segment, I'm going to talk about a vision that the Lord gave me in the midst of those meetings, and I believe what He is preparing us for. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Since 1983, Destiny Image has had a clear mandate. Publish the Prophets. Over the years, the team at Destiny has identified and published some of the most cutting edge and pioneering supernatural books of the generation, launching key leaders into visibility and helping bring the people of God into agreement with heaven's prophetic timeline. Every month, Destiny Image releases powerful new books that help believers understand and walk in the fullness of their prophetic destiny to be supernaturally conformed into the image of Jesus. 
Visit norimediagroup.com to learn about releases from Destiny Image and Harrison House Publishers. And visit destinyimage.tv for thousands of hours of on-demand video training and equipping on how to live a supernatural life. Welcome back to The Resting Place. Larry Sparks here with my special guest, a revival practitioner, <laughs> Lydia Mero. And we've been talking about what God did at the Brownsville Revival, what he did again at the Bay Revival. It's That's interesting right. because you're talking about the long-term fruit That's of right. the Bay Revival. I'm one of the evidences of that because when that was going on, I was at a point where I had dealt with some real uh, abuse and burnout from sure. a church. So I was like, I don't know about any of this charismatic stuff. And then I started to see what God was doing in Mobile and the wonderful fruit, particularly people getting saved, yeah. healed, the gospel being preached Absolutely. very clearly. So I went to the meetings in Orlando that you guys had, and I'll never forget, I mean, the intensity level was off the charts. I mean, legit. But the Lord gave me this vision as you were singing that song, open up the gates, oh open up the doors. Yeah. And to this day, I carry that with me because, you know, so many of us are praying for revival. We're mm -hmm. crying out for a move of God. I, I really believe, though, even in that phrase, God is looking for people who yeah. will literally open the gates or open the door okay. and actually make a way for the King of Glory to come in. Come on. Because he's I, I believe he's ready. He's ready. He's, he's waiting on the church. Yes. You know, Larry, the interesting thing, it's a reference to Psalm 24, yeah, right? Let yeah. the King of Glory come through the gates. You know, in Hebrew, in, in ancient times, in ancient Middle Eastern cultures, the gate of the city was the seat of authority. Yeah. So yes. when we're saying, let the King come through the gates, we're saying, let the High King kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. And so many times the reason people get discouraged, the reason they get burnt out is because we've had lingo in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In Western Christianity, we've had extended meetings. Yes. We've had all the hot shots come in. I'm not being mean to anybody. I love everybody. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of times that has resulted in flash in the pan Christianity. There hasn't been sustained fruit yeah. from it. We have got to move toward a place where we're willing to stand in the gate and saying, take your rightful place, Lord Jesus. And, you know, just before the gates passage in Psalm 24, it said, who yeah. can ascend the hill of the Lord? Yeah. He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted his soul up to idols or sworn deceitfully. We've got to have a return to purity, to holiness, to consecration yeah. and to the kind of prayer life that will hold open the door. You know, because I thought we were just talking with a friend uh, before we came here today. The fact of the matter is when we talk about revival and we say things like Pastor Kilpatrick had the church pray for two and a half years before yeah. Brownsville erupted and all throughout revival history, church history, we can point to extraordinary prayer, birthing extraordinary revival. But in Western Christianity, we'd rather get an impartation from someone else oh, yeah. than actually throw the door open to prayer. Yeah. But yeah. I believe that God, I believe with all of my heart, that's why my husband and I do what we do. That's why we go where we go. Yeah. We believe with all of our heart that God is raising up a remnant of people who will contend on the front lines for a move of God in this generation because I love everybody. But if yeah. we drive to Brownsville right now, the Brownsville revival's over. Yeah. If we drive to the Mobile Convention Center, yeah, yeah. nobody is there. I have two little boys and we owe the next generation a move of God. So all my life is about, Larry, all I'm contending for, I don't want to just relive the good old days yeah. because I loved it, but it's over. Yeah. We, we can't afford to live in nostalgia and sit on the front porch in the rocking chair and talk about the stuff God used to do. Yeah. Somebody has to stand in the gap right now. I want Malachi and Jeremiah, my little boys, to know what revival is. I want them to understand laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. I want them to experience a Book of Acts style outpouring. So we have to stand in the gate and cry out. I'm, I want the next people that, that pastors have to hire on staff yeah. to be night watchmen so that people can come and pray in the middle of the night yeah. and it be secure. I want to see churches wake up to the reality of throwing open the door so that we can say, open up the gates for the King of Glory. That's that's who we are. That's what we contend for. We've got to have a move of God. When, as we finish up, Lydia, yeah. I want you to paint a picture. 
what does New Testament revival look like? Because people yeah. throw the language around. They I've do. been in places where I know for a fact yeah. that if that measure of revival broke out, yeah. it would not be welcome, but they still use the word they still use revival. <laughs> what does it look like to you? One time we were in London and we were on the underground. We were waiting on the platform for the train to come through. And the little British lady's voice comes on and said, please mind the gap between the train and the platform. Yes. And honestly, Larry, I had a major moment with God. I looked at my husband and said, oh my goodness, that's it. This is revival. We Revival occurs when God shows up by His Spirit to close the gap between my daily experience and what I see written in the book of Acts. You know, Larry, he said, Peter stood up and quotes Joel 2. In Acts 2, Peter quotes yeah. Joel 2, and he said, in the last days, says God, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So there was no gender gap. He yeah. said, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. So there was no age gap. There were no categories. There were no ministry segregations whatsoever. Yeah. It was a free for all outpouring. It was, you know, everybody forgets this, but Stephen was not one of the fivefold apostles. No, no, no. Right. Stephen was an excellent waiter. So we're going to see these signs follow those who believe. When God shows up by his spirit to close the gap between our daily experience and the book of Acts, we're going to, we're going to feel like we are reliving these pages right in front of us. I believe that with all of my heart. Revival is not a style of music. Yeah. Revival Revival is not a style of preaching. Revival is not just um, enthusiasm. Revival is when we see the reality of what the early church saw right here today. As many theologians before any of us have ever pointed out, the book of Acts has no formal ending yeah. because it was a never supposed to be uh -huh. over. And for me, I don't want to contend until I see what I saw at Brownsville or to uh -huh. what I saw at the Bay because I don't believe that God re-serves up leftovers and throws them in the microwave. I, that's not my Jesus. He serves fresh bread every time. So for me, what I'm looking for is what I saw in the book of Acts. There, if you have not, you know, Steve used to scream all the time, if your shadow is not healing the sick yet, then there's more. Yeah, and I think yeah. that the religious spirit in America right now has told people that it is um, too much for you to contend for yes. more of God. There's always, oh no, you got him when you got him. Friend, that is ridiculous. When the book of Acts is your daily reality, then you can say you've arrived, but until our shadow is healing the mm. sick, there's more to press in for. So so we've got to contend. We've got to meet God in the secret place. We've got to fast and we've got to birth a generation in the fires of revival once again. Lydia, will you pray for the folks at I would home love to. and just pray as you're led by the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. So Father, in the name of Jesus, for every man, woman, boy, and girl that's watching right now, I ask you to wake up yeah. hunger for your presence. I ask you to wake up hunger for the precious Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give the remnant permission to contend for revival without feeling guilted by the religious spirit that's been at work in this nation. No, it's time for the remnant to rise up. Father, awaken fasting, awaken prayer in the midnight hour. Father, awaken the watchmen in this nation, awaken the doorkeepers, the gatekeepers to throw open the doors and say, let the King of glory come in. Father, awaken the consecrated ones, awaken holiness and purity again amongst your people in this nation. And we ask you, Lord, to do that which you promised to do. Pour out your spirit on all flesh. I ask you to pour your spirit out on white people, on black people, yeah. on Hispanic people, on Asian people. Father, every tribe and tongue, on every age group, on both genders, in the mighty name of Jesus, pour out your spirit that the name of the Lord Jesus might be magnified in this generation. Give us the revival that our hearts cry out for, and we ask you to do it in the matchless name of Jesus. Um, and we Amen. will accept no Substitute. Amen. We hold up the book of Acts. We hold up the day of Pentecost. Yes. And we say, Lord, we're pressing in for that. Yes, amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Hallelujah. Name. Amen.